First step to getting listings through Mojo is to sign up for Mojo. So you go to mojosells.com, you sign up, you log in, uh, link is in the description for the link to the website. I don't, I don't have an affiliate code. And then you sign up for what's called the triple line dialer right here for $139 and the neighborhood search function, which is $50. So it's you're paying $200 a month, but this is completely worth it, and you'll see why in a bit. There's a single line power dialer and a triple line power dialer. You call one at a time, it dials for you, it's great, but a triple line dialer calls three numbers at a time for you, and you'll be seeing it in action shortly. So once you've gotten all that situated, you go to data and dialer, and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is the neighborhood search. So you click that, you zoom out, and you find a neighborhood that you want to extract phone numbers from. Um, the blue areas are places that I've already gone to. And so, let's see. I want this north chunk of Kirkland here. I want every homeowner, homeowner's phone number in this area. So I'm gonna press free form plotting. and draw out the radius of, well, I'll, I'll hit this side too. Get that waterfront properties, you know? Okay, so you leave these unchecked. These are filters if you want to filter them. I want everyone's phone number. I don't care who you are, I want it all. And you leave this unchecked. So I have to tell you about the do not call registry. Um, people can sign up to be placed on the do not call registry. A lot of the times, most of the time, 95%, of, 99% of the time, people aren't going to care. No one's going to care that you called them when they're on the do not call registry. Maybe, maybe they'll be like, hey, I'm on the do not call registry, don't call again. But I've noticed that in the higher price point areas, there are Karens in these areas who are probably unhappy with their life their marriage, and they'll take out their frustration on you. Uh, maybe they don't. Maybe maybe they don't feel like they have any control in their life, so they'll feel the need to control this. Oh, something bad's happening to me, and I'm getting harassed by someone trying to help me with my properties. And then she'll threaten to report you, which can result in a fine of like. $14,000 or something, it's, it's, it's high. It's high up. And I've never really experienced that on the lower price point areas. So do with that information what you will. Uh, weigh the pros and cons, assess the situation, whether you want to do this or not. I've learned not to do it in these higher price point areas. So I am not, I don't want the do not call data. <clears throat> so if I did, I would, I would get 2100 numbers, but I don't want those numbers, so I'll be getting 770. You press import, I understand, and I'm going to press uh, North Kirkland Scrub to tell me that there's no do not call numbers here. Um, add to a calling list. I, I recommend you sort out your lists by towns and cities. I mean, this is going to make sense in a bit, but I've already, I already have my... Okay, well, I don't want to. I don't want to add on to an existing list, so I'm just gonna do that in a bit. So you have an option to keep old or keep new or keep new and old. There are some people with multiple properties out there, and if you press keep old, that means none of the new repeat numbers are gonna be extracted. You're only just gonna keep the old ones in your prior data loads. Um, if you press keep new, you are going to, I guess, get the new data and I, maybe delete the old ones, I don't know. But if you keep new and old, you get both. I don't want to be recalling people, I'm, I'm just keeping old. So p finish import, it doesn't take too long. So my data, we're going back to my data. All right, so now it's over here. A North, North Kirkland scrubbed. It's not organized yet, so I'm gonna find my, my city, press these three arrows, 
edit. And this is unchecked, so I'm going to put that in there. And now it is North Kirkland, North Kirkland Scrubbed is now in my Kirkland list. Um, you, can, you can create groups, which I recommend. Um, this is a great way to keep track of how you're converting. So tr you, you, of course you got your trash, you got your not yet interested. You can do this however, however you want, but I have an appointment set group and I have my info captured group. If I click this, it has all the people that I've captured their info on. You can, um, a designated lead is, it gets this L mark on it and it tells Mojo to count this as a lead. And there are metrics that you can look at the end of the day when you press reports. Um, that tells you, when you, if you go to session and you pick a day, I didn't prospect just, uh, today, I, I just got to the office, but I did, pro I did prospect yesterday. So you can see, you can see how you're doing, you, you know, I made 30, con I had 30, 30 conversations, I didn't get any leads yesterday, uh, zero leads, I got zero appointments, um, but that's okay, you just keep doing it because it is a numbers game. Your yes is right around the corner. So you press data and dialer. Uh, let's, let's start the dialer now. You know, you can figure this groups out on your own. Um, do with that what you will. Everyone's going to be different. So you click on a calling list. You have to click it. And now this turns green and, and nobody's been called here. So here's all their information. I'm going to click power dialer. Just copy what, what's on my screen here. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, five rings. I don't need seven. That's a. Uh, you don't need seven rings. You don't need it. All right. Start dialer. You know you can read these with your own eyeballs. You can figure it out. Okay. So, click to call is going one by one. Um, when the phone call ends, you click to start the new call. I don't want that. You want to be more efficient with your time. So you start the power dialer. Oh, 50 contacts to reach the goal. My weekly contact goal is about 150, so I've already hit 100 this this week. It's a slow week. Um, all right, so you press start dial, start dialing. Now it's connecting to the dialer on the interface, and now it's telling you to it's telling you to dial the number on the screen, and you will be prompted to type in this PIN number to get you connected. So I'll put my phone on speaker. Using your touch and phone, please enter your PIN number. Your okay. PIN number. You are now logged into the Mojo Dollar. Please press the start button on your screen to begin calling. I press that 80, and now I got this right here. Now it's going to start dialing three numbers at a time. Each address has about one to three phone numbers, so it's going to be hammering through that. Here are your metrics. Hey Paul, it's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How you doing, Paul? Wrong number. Wrong number. So I press the bad number. It's going to mark that as a bad number. Um, so you got your contact. Depends on how how you want to define a contact. Thank you for calling Shannon and Company. Our office. I'm going to do bad number because I don't want to call. I don't want to keep businesses in my database. Um, you want to keep your scripts out in front of you. You definitely want it. You definitely want your scripts in front of you. Um, you have these op voicemail, so you press no contact. Uh, next number was grayed out in that previous one. Hello. Hello. No contact of that. I don't really use these ones. You can leave a voicemail. I don't. I don't. You. I never use these fun ones. But I use pause and hang up. You'll see me use pause when I get someone calling back. I'll need to pause this triple line dialer to go call this callback number. Um, you can hang up on the phone number and stop. Stops the entire process. I highly recommend you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Paul. You have the wrong number. Sorry. 
Damn, three bad numbers in a row. But that's okay, you just keep on going. Hello? Hi, Lorraine. Yes? Hi, Lorraine. This is Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How are you, Lorraine? From where? From Compass Real Estate. Lorraine, I'm just calling because there's a bunch of yeah. homes in, Bel in Kirkland selling for over asking price. I'm just wondering if you had any plans on buying this. No, I have no interest. No interest in selling the Kirkland place. Thank okay, you. Okay, gotcha. Well, Lorraine, if you ever did, when do you think that would be? All right, so she hung up. And so, I mean, I did ask her if she had any plans on moving. And if she did, when do you think that would be? Which is my million dollar question. I'll explain that later. But that's a contact to me, so. One contact. There's a lot of. Vo There's a lot of vocal psychology in this, because to the on, on the other side, all they know about you is what they hear with their ears. So you have to be really aware of all your inflections, whether you're talking upward or downward. Uh, your your speed of voice, your pitch. You typically want to match them on their phone. So. You listen, because you'll hear them if someone's like, hello, I'll be like, hey, this is Aaron. Or if they're like, hello, I'll be like, hey, this, if they're like, hey, this is Melissa, I'm like, hey, this is Aaron, I'll, I'll match that. I'll match it. Because if you're a certain type of energy and someone comes at you at it with a completely different type of energy, your call has been forwarded. you're like, whoa, dude. Match my level if you want to build that instantaneous level of subconscious favorability. That this is Colin Thompson and you read your cell phone voice. That now. level of rapport with me. Match my level. You know? When you're hanging out with someone and he's being a fucking. Hello, this is Julie. Hey, Julie, it's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How are you, Julie? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Julie, I'm just calling because there's a bunch of homes in Kirkland selling for over asking price. I'm just wondering if you had any plans on buying or selling a home in the future. Nope, we're only two years in this one and we're going to stay for a while, but I appreciate your inquiry. Sounds That's amazing. Of course. Well, Julie, before I get going, if you ever did, when do you think that would be? <laughs> I don't have a date. Uh, okay. 20 years from now? Oh, that's a long time. We put a lot into this house and we love it, so not anytime soon. Sounds great, Julie. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Contact. Um, you're going to notice that there are the groups right here. You, It'll pop up. Um, you, if you, if, if you set an appointment, you want to click the appointment and then press contact. So now they're contacted and they're put into the appointment group. If you, If they're a... I forgot, um, info collected or something. Hi, you reached Lindsay Thompson. If, if, if you got their info, if they want to be followed up with, you press info collected and then you press contact and now you contacted them and they go into the info collected group. Um, you're also going to notice that there's a Zillow button here and something below, below it, I forgot. Uh, you Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice if you press, system. If you press the Zillow button, you get their Z you, their Zillow listing pops up, which is... S Hello? Please leave your message for... Which is super useful when when someone's like, uh, maybe I'll sell if I get the price that I want. You just hop on over to that Zillow button and you immediately know what this estimate is, which is a good baseline of like where... what you know, what area of price you're dealing with. This estimate's pretty, you know, has a large margin of error. Please leave your message for... Has a large margin of error, but it tells you where you're playing around, you know? So another important aspect... Your call has been forwarded. Another important aspect to dialing. Oh, um, I'll get that in a bit. I, I, I want to finish up on... Please leave your message for... You want to make sure that you master all your vocal inflections, tonalities, speed, and pitch, and your ability to match those things with someone else. You want to... Hey, Paul. It's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How are you, Paul? Good. Yourself? Good. Paul, I'm just calling because there's a bunch of homes in Kirkland selling for over asking price. 
Just wondering if you had any plans on buying or selling a home in the future, Paul. Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Well, Paul, if you ever did, when do you think that would be? I'm, I'm not, not interested in this right now. But anyway, thanks for calling. Take care. All right, take care, Paul. You're going to notice that I say their name a lot. And um, it's a sales trick that I learned from this really good cold caller who I was... But you'll notice that I say his, their names a lot. And there's a purpose to that. Um, I once was being called by a sales guy one time. And I was really... I had my focus in on that call. I was really captured by it. And there's a lot of psychology at play, but the name was... The name thing was one of the aspects of it. And, my, and at the end of the call, I, he, I was sold. He was also a great salesman, but my buddy who was listening was like, my, my buddy who was listening was like, he said your name a lot. And I was like, I didn't even notice. I just had my attention on the guy and... Thank you for calling the Kaiser Permanente. No. Bad number. I just had my attention, the, he just had my attention the entire time. And after that, I was like, I'm going to start saying their names a lot but not just a lot it's strategic like before the end of a sentence or at, at the beginning of a sentence i feel like they're i think they're when you say their name it refocuses them it refocuses your prospect to get back into the attention of what you're saying i believe so before i say an important line i'll put their name before it so Lisa, if you were to buy or sell, when do you think that would be? So that's the psychology of dropping the name. There is so much cold calling psychology at play here that I can't explain all in one video. This is just for how to use Mojo and how to make, how to get, you know, listings and leads off of that. So I'll make a, another video in the future on cold calling psychology. For now, hello. Hey, Satish. Yeah. Hey Satish, it's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How are you, Satish? Which, which uh, uh, what's your name? My name is Aaron. I'm with Compass Real Estate. Satish, I'm just calling because there's a bunch of homes in Kirkland selling for over asking price. And I'm just wondering if you had any plans on buying or selling a home in the future. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, not right now. Maybe, um, I'm not selling anything. Okay. Okay, that's okay. Well, Satish, if you ever did, um, if you ever bought or sold anything, when do you think that would be? Um, no idea. No idea. Within three years? More than three years? More than three years. Okay. All right, sounds good, Satish. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. So I used to just take everyone's phone number, wh whoever would give it to me, but I stopped that because I found myself following up with people that don't have any plans to do anything. So what I started to do was really qualify my leads and only take the people that want to do something within the next three years. Because I don't want to be talking to anyone that wants to do something in 10 years. And they might be doing something, you know, they, they might be doing something in five years. Who do, they don't, you never know. But I don't want to be focusing my time on that. I want to know who's ready to go. I want to know who's, well, not ready to go, but going to be ready to go within the next few years the next couple years. All right, so um, video games is really important to my process. You're gonna notice that you're gonna have a lot of time when you're just waiting for someone to pick up. And you're gonna get bored and tired of what you're doing here. So what I found, and I've, you know, I've tried a lot of things. Just something mindless that you can do. I used to scroll on Instagram, but I ran. I would run out of content to, you know, you can only scroll so much until you just start seeing the same stuff. Hi, this is Shannon Ashton. Please. So I started to play, you know, Pokemon, because uh, I love Pokemon. And, um, and then I just started, fuck it, I'll, I'll play a bunch of games. So this keeps me busy while I wait for someone to pick up. And I only recommend you doing this when you have your scripts down. Coming over 
will return your call as soon as possible. When you understand how this works and you have your scripts down, only then do I recommend you doing this. And when someone actually wants to have a conversation, you know, after you've asked, oh, well, if you ever did, when do you think that would be? And they're like, oh, you know what, I'll, in about two years. And then that's when you pause and you're like, okay, cool, what's... Hello? Hey, Shelly. Yeah? Hey, Shelly, it's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How are you, Shelly? I'm good. Good. What can I do for you? Well, Shelly, I'm just calling because there's a bunch of homes in Kirkland selling for over asking price. I'm just wondering if you had any plans on uh, buying or selling a home in the future. I'm not interested in selling my house, so thank you for reaching out. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm. I don't know if I should trash it or, or maybe she's just having a bad day. I'll put in a contact. Um, but if they're like, oh yeah, maybe I'll do something in like a year or a, a year or two. Whoa. Um then you want to have that conversation with them. Oh cool, what's happening in, you know, what's happening in, what's happening in a year or two? But this is pretty much it. This is how you do it. Now, one thing to note is, I'm picking a very popular area to be calling. These people are getting hit with cold callers a lot. Hello. Hey Oscar, it's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. How are you Oscar? You don't want to waste your time with bad numbers. When people start telling you why they don't aren't planning on doing anything, you don't want to waste your time with that. Just no contact it. It doesn't, or or contact or contact it. No contact it or bad number it. Um, it doesn't matter. You you don't want to waste your time. You don't. So this is pretty much it. Um, this is how you cold call. Anyway, this is something that you have to do every day. Um, it's there's a discipline involved, and um, if you're not disciplined then two things. Number one, you're just bad at it and you don't like it because you're bad at it. But you're bad at it because you haven't really gotten a chance to get good at it. At the tone, please record your message. So you gotta keep going and keep practicing and get that reference experience of being like, oh, it's working, I'm getting leads, I'm, I'm converting people, oh, I'm getting appointments, whoa. But until then, you're gonna stay bad at it and you're not gonna wanna do it because you're bad at it. You know, I, I, meet all, I meet people all the time that are like, oh, I just don't like cold calls, I'm bad at it, uh, it's just not my thing. Well, that's because you just haven't taken the time to get good at it. You all, all, and all that means is you just do it for a while and practice and practice and practice, get that reference experience of going like, oh shit, I just set an appointment. Oh man, I'm, I, I, I got a listing from it, whoa. You gotta get those reference experiences and, you're, and then you start to realize, oh, this is the way. This is, if I just do this every day consistently, it's a numbers game. I'm gonna get someone that's interested in selling like next month or something. It's, you just gotta keep on going. That's, it's all a mindset, you just keep doing it. So that's number one reason why, well, what was, what was I talking about? I, I don't remember what it was, but the first reason was that you're bad at it. The second, oh, the reason why you don't do it every day? Uh, number two, the second re the first reason is you're bad at it, and the second reason is your mindset and your goal with this is not aligned. Maybe you believe that um, you can't do this. Maybe you believe that people don't want to work with you. Maybe you believe that you're not able to uh, develop rapport over the phone. Maybe you believe that people aren't going to want to work with you because you're new. Maybe you believe that you're not good enough. Maybe you believe that you're afraid of success. Whatever it is they believe, if you don't believe that you can do it, you immediately, by default, lose. And you can't get good at this. You won't be able to give yourself a chance to get good at this if your mindset and your beliefs are not aligned with the action you are taking towards a goal. So you need to make sure that your mindset is fully aligned before you even start doing this. Or, or do this, you force yourself to do this until your mindset changes. Which is tough because, you know, that's an uphill battle you're facing. You gotta, re you gotta rewire your, li your limiting beliefs first. But, I mean, if you, don't, if you don't understand how to do that, if you don't know what it takes to, to rewire your unconscious mind, then, then all you can really do is just force yourself to do this until you learn that you can do it. Um, but 
If that's your case, then I would go Google Neuro Linguistics Programming or Timeline Therapy or something like that. Uh, Google limiting beliefs and go learn about limiting beliefs first because if you have limiting beliefs, then that's a larger issue than just being bad at cold calling. So, so basically I just wrapped up pretty much a, a good summary on how to get the leads and how to extract their um, information. And if I'll show you this. Um, this is all public information, you know, on in June 22nd, I, I got all, I found someone that's adding square footage to his land, it's, it's taking six months to finish, when he finishes he's going to sell and then buy another home on the east side, which is, he's probably going to sell for over a million and he's going to buy for over a million, which is a $30,000 um, commission check on both sides. Vincent here is buying in six months after his work is situated and his funds are saved, like, you know, every not every, not yesterday I talked to 30 people and I got nothing but like here June 15th uh, the home has to feel right wants to sell and move in Bellevue so you know that's fifty sixty thousand dollars of commission right there on the sell and move daughter's living with her um, oh I, I actually set an appointment with her I, I I I went out to go meet her and she wants to go list her home when her daughter moves out of the when her daughter moves out so like you just have to keep going. This works. You you have to believe it works. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your goals and the actions that you take, and you just go for it. And you do this every day, and then you're, and then you, you know, you attract what you think. If you don't believe it's gonna work, it's not gonna work for you. If you believe this is gonna work, it's gonna fucking work for you. So that's the prospecting side. Then there's the follow up side. When someone says they're gonna move like six months from now, I want to be hitting up. The, I want to be hitting them up next month. I want to be hitting them up once a month, probably, um, in whatever form, whether it's text, email, or text or phone phone number. I don't do email anymore. Um, or, you know, it's it's something, and it, it goes along the lines of this. Hey, you told me that. Hey, Brian, it's Aaron with Compass Real Estate. Uh, last time we we spoke a month ago, and um, you mentioned that you had, were planning on moving in five more months. Just wondering if that was still the case. And then you get into a conversation from there. Okay, cool. Well, um, is there anything that I could do for me, for you at, at, from my end? Or you can look up what home that sold nearby and tell you, hey, just wanted to let you know that this home sold nearby. So this is a very good comparable for you. Um, are you still on the track for five months from now? Okay, cool. Well, and then and then you just keep following up with them until they're ready to meet up with you. You know, you you ask them something like you ask them something like So when would uh, I'm sure that you're curious to um, how much your house could sell for, what we need to do with the sell, what we need to do to sell for that price and how much it would be left in your pockets once everything's said and done. When would be a good time for us to uh, discuss all this? And then you set that time to go meet and then talk. And then close them. So let's say you meet someone that's, let's say you talk to someone that wants to move a year from now. First you figure out, okay, cool. When, when, when someone says next year, right now it's July, or right now it's June, so next year could mean beginning of 2022 or late 2022. So you have to ask them that. Okay, cool. Or, uh, well, what part of next year do you plan on uh, making that move? Towards the beginning of the year, middle, or end? Um, more like spring, summer. Oh, okay, cool. So good thing you fucking asked that because that's actually six to eight months away um, when you want to really get in front of them. So now that you got that figured out, then you can adjust your follow-up schedule accordingly. So I'll, I'll probably hit them up in three months because I don't want to be hitting them up every month if they're moving a year from now. Um, that's, you know, you're going to become a nuisance on their end and, and, and I don't want to be wasting my time. I want to be giving my time to the clients that are ready to move sooner than that. So, so yeah, if they're moving a year from now, I'll hit them three to six months later and then reassess, reevaluate where they're at because timelines do change frequently depending on what happened in their life, um, some kind of situation came up or they realized something that makes them want to move sooner or later, 
you have to you have to be there and figure that out so if they if they say two months I'm gonna hit them up in one month if they say two years I'm gonna hit them up at least one year um, I you can't it's not that they're liars it's just that life happens and um, life happens life happens things happen and things change plans change so I'm getting a phone call right now I'm opening up another tab and I'm searching up this phone number so I can hey this is Aaron Hi, Aaron. hey Bart hey this is Barton yeah yeah hey Barton this yeah I'm calling because there's a bunch of homes in uh, Kirkland selling for over asking price yeah and Barton I'm just wondering if you had any plans on buying or selling a home in the future no, I'm. I'm gonna be here for a while. I've been here for probably 15 years. Wow. Okay. Well, Barton. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, Barton, if you ever did, if you ever did buy or sell something, when do you think that would be? Oh. Uh, it'll be a while. Uh, unless I do some sort of little investment thing. How long is a while, Barton? Um. Me personally, I'll be here for probably seven to ten more years in this house right okay. in Kirkland yeah I'm in the Highlands okay. but I may do something else so I'll keep your name in my Rolodex alright I appreciate it sounds good Barton take care thank you Aaron bye bye alright so I'll mark that as a contact I'm not going to keep his info because that's way too long seven to ten years I don't want to be keep I don't want to be keeping track of that um, especially if you're cold calling every single day and getting new leads every day you don't want people that are selling in seven to ten years. You're 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 going to be packed with business. So, this is how I do it. This is my follow-up system. I just walked you through my follow-up system. Use whatever CRM you want. I know I know people selling a hundred homes a year using a, a notebook or an Excel spreadsheet. It really doesn't matter what you use as long as you're consistent and you can organize your information well. It doesn't matter what CRM you use. So that is how I made $100,000 in one year of cold calling um, last year using Mojo Dialer and I don't really have many buyers uh, I'm a listing agent so I mean I'll do both um, this is also a great actually a great way to find off-market properties for your buyers I double ended a listing or I double ended a deal for my buyers who didn't stand a chance with their VA loan in this market and so I was like, all right, let me find you guys at home. So I just circle prospected in their area that they were looking for, in the price range they were looking for. And I found them a home and I just double ended that deal and it was beautiful and quick and easy and really simple. And this is the power that you have. This is the, this is the unique selling proposition that you have that, you, that other agents don't. You know, use this to your advantage. Tell, tell sellers, hey, I'm prospecting for buyers all the time for your listing. I, I can, like no other agent is, aggressively actively marketing like that you know most agents just put it on the MLS I'm literally finding you buyers or for your buyers you say I'm literally finding you homes off-market homes no other agent is doing this and this is a very compelling this is a very compelling selling point that you have an as a, you have as an agent if you're cold calling typically with my buyers I, I, I really would rather especially if they're at more than a 20 minute drive I would rather pay an agent to go show them that house and take them on tours rather than take because 20 minutes out 20 minutes back and then the 30 minutes I spend with them at that one house is over an hour if they want to go see another house that's another like 40 minutes added on I want to be spending my time doing this this is my money this is my money producing activity and um, you know if you take 10 listings compared to 10 buyers, your time is spent very differently with listings compared with buyers. Your time is spread thin with buyers. You're like, okay, well, I, I can meet you at the uh, this listing in 30 minutes. I just got to wrap up with this showing right here. I, and, then, and then we can schedule something. And then you're like exhausted by the end of the day because you drove 50 miles to show 10 clients shit compared to you have 10... Like if you have 10 listings up for sale, you're not doing, you're not really doing anything. You just have it marketed and you, and then when the offer review date comes, you're negotiating contracts and it's really comfortable. So how do you want to spend your time? I know that most top producing agents are not buyer's agents. 
They're listing agents. So you figure out what you want to do with your time, how, do you, how you want to value your time, um, and go from there. I hope this helped. Uh, I hope you crush it in this. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment below. Like and subscribe if you made it to this point, and if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, leave a question. Let me know what you want to see more. And if you made it to this point, you are my favorite, favorite, favorite person. I want to know who you are. So, so in the comments below, I want you to say, uh, I want you to say, I love Mario. <laughs> say, I love Mario in the comments below. So I know who you are because I, I want to know who, who made it to this point. You're my favorite. Like, God damn, you're my favorite person. You're my favorite people. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video and take care. Well, you made it to the end. Thanks for, thanks for coming here. This video is two years old and since then a lot has happened. I get about a dozen agents per week reaching out to me asking for training and me and my partners at the co-founders have developed a special training that has allowed agents to take 10, 20, 30, 40 listings in their first year of real estate. So if you want to be a part of that training, it's free by the way, if you want to be a part of this free training, you DM me the words breakfast club on Instagram at Mr. Aaron Yoon. Follow me and then message me breakfast club at Mr. Aaron Yoon so, uh, so that I can invite you in. This has changed so many agents lives around the world. It works no matter where you're at. So if you want to learn how to take 10 to 40 new listings this next year, DM me the breakfast club at Mr. Aaron Yoon.